What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the greatest vlog in the world. My name is Jeff, your favorite tour guide in New York, right? I'm gonna piss off all the tour guides in New York. They're gonna be like, who's this kid? Why is he making a video of my city? Well, no, it's a little bit different. I know I'm not a tour guide in New York, but it's your favorite tour guide on YouTube, right? And we are today uh, in this video, we are going to be making a Portuguese tour of New York. Uh, if you're watching this and saying, well, if it's so Portuguese, why is it in English? You can turn on the Portuguese subtitles. Podes ver este vídeo em português escrito lá embaixo no ecrã para saberes o que é que a gente estamos aqui a fazer em Nova York. So, without any further ado, let's check out all the big lights, all the big shiny lights, and let's get into the Portuguese tour of New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they know what they're doing, don't they? So, in case you don't know, the shiny, all these shiny lights, this is Times Square, all right? I don't know anything about Times Square. I'm not going to go into it, all right? Um, <laughs> we did watch a video of a tour guide on YouTube. Uh, was it Sarah? Sarah Funky. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your tips. We watched that in uh, the hotel room. And, of course, uh, we were too late to book a tour. So yes, we did want to actually book a tour for Monday, but we got there and it turns out that this lady, YouTuber's tours, just like Jeff's tours in Madeira, for all my Madeirans watching, was fully booked for a long time. Power of YouTube, I guess. If you guys thought Pico Duariedo was packed, you should see this place. There's people everywhere. Andrea's losing his mind, doesn't know what to film. He's filming everything. I think it's this way, yeah? Alright guys, this is probably going to be the cheapest Portuguese food that you're going to find in New York, right? Over here. <laughs> this is golden sardines. Yes. So edible gold inside, so no other, uh, and you said you got this patent. Yeah, it's a patent. It's a patent. So no other store in the world can replicate it. If you go to another sardine store and you see this, call us, we'll sue them. Yeah, we have Portuguese lawyers, <laughs> the best Portuguese lawyers in the in This the is game. A, a Portuguese company, correct? Absolutely. Andre just told me a fact here that I did not know. This company started in 1942, selling only eels, and then post-war, post-World War II, uh, they started selling so many other fish. It, it became a 22-store franchise. Uh, there's 22 stores in Portugal, and this is the very first store outside of the country. How long has so, it been okay. here? Since August. We haven't even made a year yet. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So maybe we'll be invited to the reunion. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to sponsor us or something, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Absolutely. you guys need to sponsor Andre. Is it, you're an aspiring hip-hop artist? Yeah, I'm a hip-hop artist. I, you know, I, I put out music all the time. You know, I'll even do a little rock. I'll, I'll do anything, bro. I'm out here just making music. There you go. Music is great. Thanks, Absolutely. Andre. It was great meeting you, man. See you later. You Stay too. Safe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, bro. Only in New York are you going to find a hustler working inside this kind of a store. When I say this kind of a store, I mean a small store uh, with 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. How cool is that? Andre, thank you very much for those fun facts that we did not know. And keep up the good work. This morning, we tried our first real Portuguese treat. Jokes are over. Let's get into the real deal. We're out with Joey Bats. We just had a great interview with the Joey Bats. Uh, he's, you know, if you think of pastel nata in America, you're gonna hear of Joey Bats. So we're gonna try two pastel nata. That's right. Our first, uh, we came all the way to New York to have a pastel nata. Can you believe it? <laughs> there we go. Mm. So warm, right? The we warm. serve them warm. Oh, wow. Because it's the only way I like to serve them warm and always with the cinnamon. That was frozen half an hour ago. Amazing. It can ensure that you can have the just as good an experience as home as you do here. Yeah, fantastic. We didn't talk about it, but a few years back mm. is when I started the online business. So the first one to ship nafas in the, in the U.S. Stick them in the oven? That's it. That's it. Wow. Yep. 
I'm originally from a small town in Western Massachusetts called Ludlow. The uh, majority of people there are either Portuguese or Polish immigrants. Both of my parents are from the northeast corner of Portugal, the area called Trás dos Montes. My father is from an aldeia right, or a village right outside of Montalegre, and my mother is from a village right outside of Butiques, way up in the corner there. My grandparents didn't speak English, so I learned by speaking with them, and you know, now my Portuguese is very fluent, so as a result, it was my grandparents that came over in the early 70s, and my parents met here. So my grandmother, she was the organizer or the one in charge of the group folklorico of the local Portuguese club. So my uncles and my mom, they all danced in this group. And then I started as a little kid. And then I danced in that, that group and other groups for like at least 25 years. Like, and I do the castanholas with my fingers. Having left that town for the big city, it's interesting because here I'm exposed to other cultures and language and stuff, but it's really interesting and cool to think back to like back then, like, you know, we went to the, the weddings were all at the same place at the Portuguese club. We had the, the Portuguese dances every weekend. My father, he still has a, a butcher shop that's been in our family like 50 years. Chouriças, farinheiras, alheiras, salpicões, presunto, all that stuff. Bacalhau coming out of your ears. You take it for granted then, right? You, just like, oh, it's just another day. Now. But here you start to kind of miss it. Now, luckily, my mother's moved here, so I still have access to the Portuguese food. I still don't see a large movement of, of Portuguese here. And if we do, they're not really the immigrants I grew up with. It's a different, uh, a different level. A different, you know, they're, they're educated, they got a good job. Engineers, doctors, you know, it's different. It's different. I've, been, I've been in New York for about 11 years now. 11 years now, and I started my business in tw at the end of 2016. And it just kind of went from there, you know. I started on the street fairs, and I tried wholesale. And then after a while, I realized, oh, in the winter, I have nowhere to sell on the street, so I need to open a shop. I opened a shop in 2017, July, quit my career, uh, and I focused that on that entirely. And uh, I, I, was, I got to a point where I was already selling 20,000 nathas a week, which for the U.S. is a lot. And in Portugal is nothing, but here is a lot. When I started selling pastéis nata on the street, no one knew what it was. Everybody knows what they are now. But six years, seven years ago, they'd come up to me at the fair. What is this? And me, you know, super naive. Was, oh, it's a Portuguese pastry. You're going to love it. It's egg custard. And I'm giving samples. But as soon as you say egg custard to the American, they're like, no, I'm all set. Thank you. And it's basically like a creme brulee in a croissant. And then the light bulb went off. And the next Saturday, when someone would ask what it is, I wouldn't even mention Portugal. I would say, imagine a warm creme brulee with a flaky croissant wrapped around it. Oh my God, I gotta try that. I go to Portugal maybe four or five times a year. Now it's a business expense. <laughs> Bit of a lie, no? <laughs> Behind me is Castle Clinton, right? And this building uh, used to be basically like the first immigration depot, is what they say on the boards. And between 1855 and 1890, there were 8 million immigrants coming into the United States who passed through this building. It's a bit unfortunate I'll have to wait for Ellis Island for the next trip. Uh, but we're going to try and get nice and up and close. What I did find out is that if you were coming in through Boston, you didn't have to come in through Ellis Island. So first was this place, then it moved to Ellis Island. And I don't have the information with me because we were going to go there. But thereafter, people started coming in through Boston. Let's go find a mission on how we can show you the Statue of Liberty because, I mean, we kind of have to, right? Can't come to New York and not see the statue. Huh? Let's go. Fun fact, Isaac Mendes Seixas arrived in New York from Portugal in 1730. Portugal, Portugal. Uh, his son, Benjamin Mendes Seixas of Newport and later New York, became one of the founders of the New York Stock Exchange. Bet you didn't know that, eh? Portuguese, Portuguese tour guide in New York. Check it out. But another good thing is that we're seeing a lot of uh, construction work. So we decided to pop by the financial district, seeing as we're close to the ferry before we jump on the ferry. And um, a lot of work going on, which means maybe we're in a bull market. Huh? 
Which line do you want to stand in, Andre? The one for the front or the one for the back? The front. The front? The front. Eh? Always the front. What are you going to deal with? The, the horns or the bulls? Yeah, we've got to take the bull by the horns, eh? Exactly. <laughs> Not by the bull. Should we go find that ferry? We're on the ferry to Staten Island, which gives you the free views of the uh, Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Unfortunately, we'll have to do Ellis Island next time, but I wanted to give you some facts. After uh, Castle Clinton, Ellis Island became the immigration center uh, of the United States uh, here in New York. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, it says here that it's within the US states of New Jersey and New York. So there must be like right in the middle of the border kind of thing. From 1892 to 1954, 12 million immigrants uh, arriving at the ports of New York and New Jersey were processed there under federal law. So I wish I could have seen more about that. Um, and yeah, I believe that you could also go in through Boston. So I think that the majority of the Portuguese who came to the United States would have come in through Ellis Island or through the port of Boston. Um, and this wasn't uh, as painful as we thought it would be. Right? When we were in the crowd on the way to the ferry, it kind of felt a little bit like our ancestors getting into Ellis Island in the crowds, right? This is how tough our life has become. Uh, <laughs> getting onto a crowd, onto a free ferry in New York is uh, about as tough as it gets, hey, Andre? Yes. <laughs> this seems to be a pretty cool way to explore the city. Uh, I think if I had known about this before, I probably would have done more of this. This is the first time that I'm doing this ferry under the Brooklyn Bridge. It should be pretty cool. And we are in fact on the way to Brooklyn and we should get some pretty cool views. And thanks Joey for this recommendation. Because uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fast. <laughs> Best tips I had when coming to uh, New York with that uh, from that uh, YouTuber. She had this tip that we only saw yesterday, but thankfully I brought my sneakers because I actually wanted to work out while I was here and not get fat, you know, because we're going to be here for like 12 days. Today I wore my my training sneakers, and yesterday with the other shoes, and my feet actually feel a little bit better. They're still sore, but a little bit better. So if you're coming to New York, bring two pairs of of, of shoes, comfortable shoes, and switch them around. So thanks Sarah Funky for that uh, advice. We're now in Soho and uh, apparently someone has already beaten us to it. Somebody's done a uh, Portuguese in Soho documentary, something like that. We'll link it somewhere down below. Uh, somewhere in 2018, I believe. And they got all of their references from the newspaper guys that we met just a video before from Newark. So, um, we're onto something for sure because we're finding the right sources. The Portuguese church, or at least the church where all the Portuguese kind of congregated, in fact, there is a little bit of information which I'll tell you when we get to the church. I'm helping Andrea with his bag as well. Poor, we poor guy's been carrying this around all, all day. The church of St. Anthony of Padua. 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 <laughs> the oldest Portuguese national parish in the United States, serving as a religious and cultural center, center for the Portuguese community. During the late 19th century, Soho became, uh, Soho and the surrounding areas became home to a significant number of Portuguese immigrants. They were drawn by opportunities in industries such as textiles and manufacturing, and the cultural hub was around the church. If you are a Portuguese American and you want to tell us your story or if you just want to comment then go ahead and do that like, subscribe, comment on the video on what you're enjoying. Let me show you what I've what I've spotted on Sullivan Street uh, right there. Well it had a Portuguese name technically it's Brazilian isn't it? But Brigadeiro. I mean Brigadeiro it could be Brazilian, could be Portuguese. Maybe Which came first, you know, is it the chicken or the egg? It's, it's, hey. yeah. <laughs> oh, check it out, Land Rover Defender. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> Very nice. What happened to Portuguese? Hey? Is there what happened to Portuguese? What happens? Yeah. I don't know, they left, I believe. Hey. Me, me Portuguese. 
You're Portuguese? Yes. Okay. Where can we go for some Portuguese? You know English? No. Fala português? Fala português. Ah, okay. Então, onde é que se pode vir aqui para, para, para beber um salhau? Aqui não há loja portuguesa. Antes havia, agora não. Antes havia, agora não. É tudo americano. Mas nós just bumped into this lovely lady from Minho, Portugal. Not the first person from Minho. Uh, the barber in Newark was from Minho. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no more Portuguese shops. They've left uh, more American places. I believe you can't come to New York without having a cocktail. So here I am with the most Portuguese one I could find at Macau, uh, the Antiquado, uh, and uh, which is what? It's an old fashioned, you said? Antiquado? Antiquado is like uh, old school. Old, old school. Uh, uh, I mean, Don, uh, Reposado, Don Fulano Reposado Amaro Montenegro. Pample mousse and cacao stirred and served on the rocks. I don't know what any of that stuff okay. is. I mean, it looks looks like something I'd like. You know, it looks kind of like whiskey-ish. Oh, that's nice. It's almost like a mendo amarga. And Andrea has got here a Magellan's mask, right? Uh, Máscara de Magellan's. What Andrea was saying, because Andrea told me the Magellan's, Magellan's story before. Um, so I have heard that story from uh, the history buff Andrea here. So I uh, thought I saw it on the menu and it was like, hey, yeah, you're going to be drinking that. But anyway, this is basically like Chinese Portuguese, you know, fusion kind of thing. I thought it was really interesting. I've never seen a Chinese Portuguese restaurant. So thought I'd try it out, eh? Piri Piri Ginger Sesame Slaw, which I have no idea what it is, but peanut curry sauce, salt, salt on that. So I'm having the African chicken. And that is making me use the chopsticks. Oh, it's nice though, it's kind of chilly. And I love everything chilly. So, chilly is good. Mm -hmm. In the words of Donald Trump, Macau is in fact in China. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Andrei doesn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> sorry. Dude, right. come on. Macau was once uh, a, a part of the Portuguese Empire, uh, the, a, a port of the Portuguese Empire. And then I told me that Macau was actually the last part to be given back to the last part of the Portuguese Empire to be uh, given back to its like host country kind of thing. There it is. Can you see that? It's, it looks like a different label on the back, Andrea. Export version. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit different than the one we see in uh, Madeira. I'll tell you what though, this is about as expensive as it gets. I will not ever pay more than what I paid for this coral in New York. So this, uh, this coral is going to go down well. Also because I haven't had a coral in like uh, two weeks. Huh? It's been at least two weeks, we're a little bit homesick. Coral sponsor us. Yes. Coral in New York City. Why the hell not, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we haven't asked. So we're going to ask now, you know. I think this is the second time in this video we're asking someone to sponsor us, isn't it? Anyway, cheers, Coral. We'll see you on the, we'll see you at the negotiation. On the other side <laughs> of the Atlantic. The other side of the Atlantic. Yep, still tastes great. Chicken is amazing, by the way. Sauce is awesome. So yeah, let's do it. Got tickets for the top of the rock in uh, about 40 minutes. And I believe we're like 20 minutes away. So we've got 20 minutes to eat this. And I'm gonna let those guys know, actually those guys guess what this is. If you can guess what this is, it's a Portuguese uh, delicacy. It's warm, yeah. uh, which seems to be the trick. Warm, it's actually hot. So we're gonna wait five minutes. Caramel, I forgot which one. What, do you remember vanilla. what it's? Vanilla. Vanilla and caramel. Should we try and open them up? Let's see. We're not gonna tell anyone because it's gonna be a, our little secret. Haven't we? Oh yeah. I'll tell you what, this place is worth it just for this.
If you're looking for a Portuguese hotel, look no further. Pestana CR7 Times Square. It's in a great location just off of Times Square. We're enjoying the hotel. Uh, it's very simple, all right, but it's in a great location and it's very comfortable. So, uh, yeah, that's that. We're going to check out now. We're going to go and meet with a friend of ours, João, who's going to be interviewing. We're going to be interviewing for the big project. Remember, we're building our big documentary project. It's going to take a couple of years, but we've got a very interesting prospect now, João. So we're going to have a chat with him and then we're going to exp explore uh, more Portuguese stuff. In a nutshell, I was born and raised in Lisbon. Uh, I studied there, did my master's there, and um, out of college I worked for an insurance company, left to start my own company, built a company from the ground up, and ended up selling the company to Google in 2019. And that's, uh, that's what brought me to the US. I mean, building the company brought me to the US uh, a few times a year. I would spend like six months out of the year, and then when I sold the company to Google, I, I had to move to New York definitely, and uh, I've been here for five years since. One of the things that I miss the most is um, spending my Sundays with family. And I think it's very, I'm not sure if I would call that a Portuguese tradition, but it's definitely something that happens a lot in Portugal. Uh, Sunday, people get together to have lunch and spend the afternoon together. I feel that in New York, there is not uh, so, so much of that. Definitely not for me, because uh, most of my family is not here. But uh, even the people that I know, uh, everyone feels a little bit more isolated or their parents are elsewhere. So that, that kind of tradition, uh, if you will, uh, it's something that I miss very much. A lot of the people that came from Portugal, uh, they came here to do something, something else, right? Like they didn't come here to work in finance or fashion or... Um, so it's natural that they ended up settling in places where were more like family friendly, cost of living was, was uh, you know, more affordable. Uh, and you know how this goes. Once you have like a little Portuguese settlement, uh, it just grows there, right? You know your family, uh, everyone, it just grows. So I think it's, there, there's a little bit of that. Uh, and I, I think it's kind of, kind of natural that that kind of first couple waves of uh, migrants coming from Portugal didn't come to, to New York City, um, but instead ended up uh, settling uh, in, you know, all the, all these small towns or all these communities between Boston and New York, right? They have great uh, quality of life. And, uh, you know, I, I even been to a couple of towns where you can go anywhere and just ask for things in Portuguese. Doesn't matter. School, supermarket, uh, you can leave without knowing English. <laughs> Did that surprise you? Uh, that, that, that was surprising. That was surprising. It surprised us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite Portuguese food? Mmm, tough. I have many. Um, I would say top three would be something like um, bacalhau abras, grilled fish in general. I know it's not like one thing, but it's something that I crave every time I go to Portugal. I'll say cozida portuguesa. That's, I just love it. The most surprising food I had in New York that I actually liked it. It's um, fried chicken on a waffle. Uh, it's surprisingly good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I guess I guess that's one that uh, everyone has to try. The sweet and savory that it kind of works. It's kind of delicious. <laughs> so what are you guys having, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, the, the place is called Favela. Favela Grill. Favela Grill. Oh, we're at Favela Grill in Astoria, correct? Yes. So we've come out to. Uh, neighboring, one of the neighboring uh, is is a story. One of the boroughs. It's part of Queens. Part of Queens. Yeah. So, right. Yes. So there we go. That's what we're doing. We're trying some Brazilian food. Of course, there's loads of Brazilians in, uh, in New York. So we're starting off with some caipirinha. That looks like uh, you what you guys call yuca, eh? Uh, mandioca. Mandioca, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Linguiça calabresa. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah. Bob Dita. Bob Dita. The caipirinha is almost finished. So we've got these little cheese balls, pound de caju. And um, what I didn't know is that this is actually made out of mandioca or what you also call uh, yuca. Super tasty. I think this has to be the best pound de caju that I've had in a while, in a long while, if not ever, you know. So thank you again, Chuck and Dexter, for showing us this place. Cheers.
it's so like it's the cheese flavor is just so like so strong our time in new york has come to an end or is coming to an end and uh, just as the story of the portuguese in america um, our time in new york is the same is that we barely scratched the surface uh, and behind me is a little bit of proof of how little we know about these things because this over here is in fact a portuguese uh, synagogue the first jewish congregation to be established in north america its founders were 23 jews mostly of spanish and portuguese origin who had been living in recife brazil here we go along with the portuguese jews who came to new york in the 17th century 17th century right that's 1600s so before america was founded as you were saying yeah yep. Uh, there was a small colony of Portuguese Christians in New York City by the War of 1812. Um, and yeah, the rest is all about Rhode Island and, and Newark and so on. So we're going to carry this on uh, in future episodes. As I said before, we're building a Portuguese in North America documentary. And we're so, so proud and privileged and uh, happy with all the work that we've done in the last couple of days. We've been here for about 12 days. 12 to 14 days and uh, we couldn't be more excited to be ending off this trip. <laughs> Doesn't get more Portuguese than this, huh? Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Hey, you hear that? That's how they say it in New York. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Salud. Salud. Hope you guys have enjoyed our little party. Uh, we came back to Joey Bats to try the flavored natas. Uh, and I'm very curious about the maracujá. We've got maracujá and we got uh, chocolate. So um, yeah, that was it. I hope you guys had a great, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, the Portuguese tour of New York, right? Doesn't get more Portuguese than this, eh? <laughs> André? Let's yeah? hit the road. Let's hit the road. Perfect. Ooh. You know it's good when it uh, flakes like that, eh? Ooh. Yeah, it's a subtle, it's a subtle flavor, which is smart. <laughs> of course, who am I to say? Huh? <laughs> mm.